evening, everybody, and welcome back to another Workbench Wednesday. It's Wednesday night, and we're here at the, the Workbench. Uh, going to go over some odds and ends tonight. Uh, I think what we're going to talk about tonight is a really simple simple trick. This was something that was brought up on one of our, our recent uh, programs as a, as a request from one of the viewers. So if you have questions and if you have suggestions, by all means, please uh, use the comments field here and, and type them in, and we'll, we'll try and get to them in a future episode. And tonight what we're going to be doing is a, it'll be a pretty quick one, uh, just a nice easy thing to sort of wrap up the year, and that'll be replacing traction tires on our locomotives. Um, it's a, a relatively common uh, problem, it's something that, that, that can happen a lot, also very easy to fix. So we'll, we'll take care of that tonight. Um, I'll do a, um, I've got a, a Polar Express Burke here that we'll, we'll do first, and then I'll pull out a... Um, a uh, uh, legacy diesel here, and we'll also uh, look at that one also and, 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 uh, and give it a shot. So uh, thank you all for, for joining in. We've got a pretty good crowd on here already. So hope everyone is enjoying the start of a uh, holiday season and, uh, and, and getting ready for Christmas. And I uh, hope everyone out there is doing well and feeling good and uh, enjoying all that the season has to offer. It is definitely uh, a great time of year to be into model trains. So with that, let me enlarge the uh, workbench camera here so you can sort of follow along with what I'm doing. And so we'll, we're gonna start by doing a pretty simple repair here tonight on, uh, on replacing the traction tires. And I'm gonna use our Polar Express Burke. Uh, I picked this one because, well, first of all, it was something I could, could grab quickly at, at the office. We had one close at hand. And also this is by the numbers we produce probably the most common locomotive out there. So it's a good one for you to, to see as an example. Uh, but if you don't have this locomotive, if you have a different steam locomotive, they're all gonna be very, very similar. The process that you're gonna see here is not much different. Uh, the, the tools and the tricks are all very much the same. And you don't need a whole lot of tools to do this. Uh, this one already has all the traction tires on it, of course, it didn't have a problem, but we'll, uh, we'll take the old one off and put a new one on. Uh, every locomotive that we send out usually comes with a couple of uh, replacement traction tires, whether it's a starter set or a legacy locomotive. So uh, if this is your first time doing this, you probably already have one or two. If you've got a train set, uh, you've got a little baggie that usually includes uh, a couple of these, maybe your smoke fluid in there, um, and any other little odds and ends that might come with the set. Uh, so that's where you'll find your first set of replacement traction tires. If you need more, or if you've lost these, um, or if you or just uh, you buy a train secondhand, or maybe the train's been in your family for generations, um, you can look up the, uh, especially if you have the product number, it's really easy. You go on to our support website and type in the product number, and then you'll get an exploded parts list. And one of the parts on there will be traction tires, uh, and you can order these through our customer service department. Uh, if you have an authorized service center near you, you can also work with them. They'll have these, they'll either have these on hand or be able to get these parts for you also as as well. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, on the steam locomotive, the tricky thing that you have to worry about are these side rods. Turn this a little bit so it's closer to your to the camera. Uh, you can't get the old tire off or put the new tire on with the the side rod in the way. So the first thing we have to do is remove this uh, hex screw. Uh, that holds the side rod onto the wheel, and then that'll allow us to wiggle this out of the way just enough to get in there and replace the tire. Now the uh, screw on this is a uh, five millimeter, uh, it's metric, uh, but a, a five millimeter uh, screw. Uh, if you've got a set of, of hex head wrenches, this works great for that. Uh, if not, you can probably make do with a, a set of needle nose pliers as well. You don't need a a specialized tool if you don't have it. Um, screw will come off fairly easily. We'll set that aside carefully. And now uh, we can get in around it to the to the tire. Uh, in this case, I've still got one on there. So I'm gonna get in here with my tweezers. Let's see if we can't uh, just pull that out. There's really no reason to do this preventatively. Uh, if you have a tire that's really stubborn or making a lot of uh, starting to wear or fragment around the layout, you might want to take it off before it fails. But usually these uh, come off on their own, so to speak. And all you have to worry about is the putting it back on part. Okay. So you can see how easy it is to get that old one off. 
And now we're going to try and take one of the new ones here that came in the, in the set and put that on. This will be a little bit more challenging because it's new and stiff. Uh, so you'll have to stretch it a little bit. We want to go underneath the rod. Pull it tight. Sort of work it around. It takes a little time, a little patience, but this is a repair that anybody can do at home. You don't need to send your engine into a service center just for a traction tire repair. Okay. I've got a little bit of a roll there, it looks like. We'll make sure we get it on straight and flat. That's better. Okay, and now that should be properly seated down in around the wheel, so that you can uh, you have that all around the uh, all around the wheel like that. I'm going to try and get that a little closer so you can all see it uh, how it's recessed into the uh, tire. There's actually a little bit of a rim here on the outside of the wheel that helps hold that in there between um, on the tread between that rim and the and the, uh, and the flange. Okay. All we have to do next is put the side rod back together with this pin. If you've got an older train, uh, this is if you haven't put any lubrication in here, this is an opportunity to, to do it. A little goes a long way, and I can tell you this one definitely does not need any additional lubrication. This still has its factory lubrication on it. Uh, if it feels slippery and greasy to the touch, you're probably good to go. Uh, you don't need to over lubricate. And we're going to tighten this nut back down. And now very important here, you want to make sure that the side rod still has a little bit of play in it. You don't want to over tighten this down so much that they um, that, that you can't move your side rods or you'll you'll bind things and either bend the, the, the stampings uh, or, or cause other problems. But that's all there, all there is to it. Uh, and we've replaced our, our first traction uh, tire there on the on our engine. So very easy thing to do if you have uh, if you have a problem like this at home, only takes a few minutes. We're going to go from our typical train set engine to something a little bigger. I've got a Legacy ES44 here. And just wanted to show a diesel for something different, just so we had a different uh, different piece to show here on the, on the show tonight. Um, again, whether it's an ES44 or almost any of our Legacy diesels, the processes here are going to be very similar. Um, depending on which locomotive you have, you may see things are just a little bit different. But by and large, it's going to be the same same tricks and techniques. Okay, on a diesel, you want to flip everything upside down. So we're looking at the truck from underneath. And here you'll see our traction tires are, again, on this back set of drive wheels, the ones closest to the fuel tank. So to get to those and to get those off, we need to remove the side frames. And these can be done without taking the whole locomotive apart. I'm going to actually change my lighting here a little bit. That may make me look weird but i need more lights on the on the project to see what i'm doing and the side frame will come off with a set of phillips head screws in this case and back out the two screws and this side frame will come off and as you can see, now I've got great access here to, to the wheel and the tire on that. I don't have a replacement tire here to do, um, but you've already seen that process. Exactly the same as the steam locomotive. Simply wrap a new tire around, put the side frame back on, and away you go.
Um, before I leave this project, however, I want to show you one uh, really cool uh, little feature about a lot of our, about our legacy diesels that I'm not sure everyone's really aware of. And you don't need it to change a traction tire, but uh, if you're ever doing other work on your locomotive and you need to take the trucks off to do any other sort of maintenance, uh, including lubrication, um, we have what we call our Lion Drive connector. And that means that if you take the truck and you turn it a full 90 degrees, and it, it'll fight you a little bit, uh, you'll hear it, it click. And then you can wiggle it out a little bit here, and the, the truck pops right out of its frame. Uh, we have a, a special connection here that meshes with the gears in the truck to the motor in the locomotive so that if you need to do maintenance on your locomotive, it's much easier to take the truck off. Uh, you simply disconnect a couple of uh, screws here to set your uh, wire leads off and you've got your truck off for maintenance. Uh, a neat little feature that uh, is fairly unique to Lionel as far as I know in terms of what we, uh, we do to help you ma maintain your engines. Um, there goes the little connector. Pop that back in. Uh, and replace the truck. Maybe. Our Lion Chief and starter set engines don't uh, don't have this disconnect feature, um, but still uh, very easy and, and similar process on those to get in and do what needs to be done uh, to change a traction tire should you need to. Pop it in, twist it, and we're back in line. Uh, so just a neat little feature on uh, on the locomotives that uh, allows you to do maintenance that much much more simple. I'm going to put this back on now before I forget, and mostly before I lose the screws. If you haven't noticed from watching me before, my workbench is uh, never really all that clean. So screws, they tend to wander. And then we'll take a few minutes and, and see if we have any questions on there. So if you've got some questions while I'm fiddling around with this under my nose, start typing them in and we'll, we'll get to them here in just a moment. Okay. There's also a little washer that goes on here just to complicate things for me. see what we have here as I'm doing this we'll start looking at some some questions uh, is the 2022 catalog gonna have a lot of Union Pacific stuff um, yeah I'm sure there'll be some Union Pacific in there for, uh, somewhere or another um, you know the, the catalog will be out in just a few more weeks uh, you won't have long to wait after the new year um, on that so uh, I'll keep everybody guessing uh, for the most part of what everything is uh, is in there um, but there's there's a, a whole lot in this catalog, a lot of locomotives, uh, a lot of new sets. Uh, no matter what your interest is, we've, we've got some cool new stuff um, coming in uh, up the line. So uh, definitely look forward to that come January. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Got the... So Lionel made semi-scale GG1s for 027 curves. Are they reproductions of the original from the 1950s? Uh, yes, we do have um, a, a smaller uh, traditional size GG1 uh, that's uh, based off the tooling from the 50s. Uh, and we do still that still run that from time to time. I believe the last time we ran that was um, potentially as a Lion Chief. I don't think we've done that as a Lion Chief Plus engine. It must have still been a conventional uh, locomotive. We haven't... Uh, I haven't run those in a few years, um, but uh, they're, they're probably due for a, a new appearance. Um, Otis, thank you for recommending the stick lights. Uh, they work awesome in the ceramic houses. Uh, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying those. It's another uh, thing that we did a little while back. Uh, those little peel and stick lights are a wonderful, um, easy way to uh, add, whether it's your ceramic houses or uh, other model train houses that you may have. Uh, makes it really easy to... Uh, add lights and LED, whether it's a bulb or an LED to just about anything really quick. Uh, have the Christmas Light Express train set shipped yet? I believe they are shipping out to dealers now. Uh, I seem to remember unloading those from a container a week or so ago. 
Um, so we've, we do have that. And then uh, Conrail8098 uh, seems to be having some problems with our app. Uh, you're saying it keeps connecting and then disconnecting the locomotive. I assume you're talking about the Lion Chief app um, with that. Um, as far as I know, uh, things are working well. We, I know we did, however, have some issues, uh, particularly on some of the Android devices uh, over the last uh, month or, or so, uh, last couple of months that our engineering team has been working on resolving uh, with that. And uh, in most cases, and I don't want this to sound like a cop out, but in most cases, it's actually the uh, the changes in the in the Android software or in, the, in those systems and the many, many, many devices that use that, uh, that that cause quirks, not so much a change in the app itself. So if things are working for a while and then they stop working, that's usually where we, we start. Uh, and unfortunately, we can't change those changes. We have to adapt back to, to the new realities. So um, if you're still having problems, give us a, a reach out to us through customer service. But I know uh, Dave and his team have been working very hard on that specific issue over the last couple of months. And I've seen some in, uh, emails going back and forth where it looks like uh, the vast majority of that had, had been resolved. Uh, but please uh, give us a shout if it's not, um, because those are just simply always going to be ongoing uh, ongoing challenges. Once it's, it's uh, made right, it will certainly be changed again. So um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Chris, good, good question. Foam cradle for servicing the locomotives. Um, yes, something we, we, we have looked into. Uh, very easy to make one for yourself as well with the, uh, the craft foams and things that are out there on the market. Uh, I don't have one here for my O-gauge trains that I, I work on from time to time. I do have a smaller one that you've probably seen. Let me reach up and get it off the top. Um, I use this one when I'm working on my HO models. Uh, and it's it's a very handy device to have on hand. I've probably had this one for 25 years or so now, maybe more. Um, and they, they hold up well for the long term. Uh, they're really nice when you have a little tray to put your, your screws and small parts in. Um, I still seem to have a lot of screws and small parts in here from projects that uh, are in boxes somewhere halfway completed, I guess. Uh, but that's the way it goes on this workbench. Uh, I'm sure I'm the only person who starts a project and then moves on to the next one before it's finished, right? Um, so what else do we have here? Um, do you recommend putting two track uh, wheels on the Polar Express bump and go trolley? Not quite sure what you mean on, on that one as far as putting... Um, putting two wheels on the bump and go trolley. Uh, if you want to run that on a, a separate, uh, um, perhaps you're talking about doing putting that on a separate loop from your, your main set, uh, very easy to do. Um, and use the uh, use the bumpers, uh, particularly the earthen bumpers that we that we sell are, are probably a little bit more substantial than the, the other smaller lighted bumpers uh, for handling the, the back and forth trolley, which reverses automatically on its... Uh, on its own by a mechanical switch, uh, so that's definitely definitely an option. Or you can put it on the on the loop and and run it around on its own as well. Um, hopefully that answered the question. If not, uh, you can try and try and clarify for me here. Um, Donald's asking when will the Mohawk ship? So the Mohawks were finished at the factory about a month ago, uh, and they finally. Uh, actually left the factory uh, earlier this week. Uh, we could not get, they could not get a container into the, the factory in Korea to get them loaded. Uh, so we, we lost about a, almost a month waiting for a, a container to be available, but they are on their way now. So I would, would say you'll probably see them uh, mid to late January. Uh, the Mohawks uh, should be getting here. Uh, the American Railroads S1s are on that same uh, container. That's another one that comes up from time to time. So, uh, Okay, uh, I got the uh, just got O scale cover bridge, but I'm having difficulty getting the screws in the arch ends. Any tips to get the screws in? Um, it is a bit of a it, it's not too bad of a kit, but it is a, a fun one. A um, couple of things you can try, um, and I would I would say maybe give this this one a shot. And I have some right here in the on the workbench, so I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, there is a um, there's a, a sticky putty. Uh, that's used for um, attaching things, basically, mostly attaching things to walls that then you can peel off without leaving a mark. And I use this a lot, as you see here on the end of a cork. Uh, I put a little dab of that there, and it makes a great 
uh, handle if you're painting small detail parts, uh, which is what I'll be back to doing here after this program tonight. Uh, so I have it right on hand. Uh, makes a nice little handy uh, third hand or uh, easy mount. If you take some of that same putty uh, and put a little bit on the end of your screwdriver, it wouldn't take much. Uh, this should allow, should have done this before I had the, uh, while I was trying, fighting with those screws earlier. Um, let me see if I have a screw anywhere here at random on my workbench. There's always a screw on Ryan's messy workbench because I've always got a screw loose somewhere. At least that's what I have been told by family and friends. Um, but you never have it when you need it. So, um, but at any rate here, we'll just pick up some random stuff. If it picks up a piece of uh, scale piece of lumber, it'll pick up a screw. And, and that may be a nice little handle for you to help get those screws in position uh, as you're trying to work them down. And then it will peel off of your screwdriver very easily without any problem. You won't have any, uh, any residue or anything like that on there. Okay. Uh, will there be any new uh, Lehigh Valley offerings in the 2022 catalog? Boy, uh, now we're getting a little bit more specific. And I have no idea what might be in the catalog. Um, so you'll just have to have to wait and see if there's if there if there could be anything new Lehigh Valley in there. Um, and can we get a traditional Acela? Um, and what about more Amtrak Deco? Uh, lots of cool stuff coming uh, uh, for Amtrak. It's become one of our most popular road names. Uh, and and uh, a few months back, we, we did a program with uh, Train World TV. Um, and uh, we, we talked with Matt Donnelly, uh, who's our contact there at Amtrak and, and works with all of, our, all of us model um, train manufacturers. And uh, he's such a great contact and such a great uh, representative for, for Amtrak. Uh, and makes doing prototype based models with them so much easier because he's uh, he's he's a modeler like us and a train buff like us and he loves seeing things done right and uh, and gets a real real passion out of it uh, and so uh, yes you'll definitely see some more Amtrak things coming down the down the pike from us um, it, it speaks well to the, what the, the fo all the folks at Amtrak have been doing to improve service and, and make a, a quality reputation for themselves. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when that really wasn't sort of the case. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to see Amtrak uh, doing so well and uh, seeing that I think as, as a nice reflection in uh, what all of us model manufacturers are seeing in, in terms of uh, Amtrak sales uh, and, and interest in the hobby. Okay. Um, any plans for the Blue Comet? Um, don't recall if you've got that. We just did the uh, the Camelbacks not long ago, and I'm sure you're looking for something uh, more traditional than that. Uh, the Blue Comet's another one of those um, uh, those great things. Uh, just a traditional Lionel engine that always uh, is always popular uh, and always comes back around again. So um, uh, definitely, if, if if it's not in this catalog, you'll see uh, more on that uh, coming down the down the road. Okay, uh, Kevin, got one here. We sort of scan and see if I can get to your, your question. You have the Century Club Niagara. Uh, ran it for testing and it stopped chuffing going forward. Chuffing. Okay, it sounds like you've got something wrong with the chuff switch, um, which uh, is, is it sounds like probably have a mechanical thing uh, and not um, a electronics thing which is good because those are usually the easier things to find and fix um kevin on your on your sounds on that niagara um without having one in front of me that i've taken apart and looked at or better yet having yours in front of me to do the work on i don't think i can properly answer and diagnose your issue um, my best recommendation since that's something that's uh, long out of warranty would be to go on to lionel.com uh, type in, in our search engine there uh, and look for a uh, an authorized service center near you and have and take it into one of them and have them uh, take a look at it. It could be just something just as simple as uh, you know something fouling uh, the uh, sensor or something like that in there uh, that'll be relatively easy to to fix and repair, or it could be something much different than that. Um, so uh, definitely something you can take in and have someone take a look at. Um, not something that I can probably diagnose here over the the web on a uh, on a live stream like this. But uh, thank you for your support, and uh, I hope that you know at least tried to answer your question for you. 
Um, Michael's asking another common one, uh, when we expect to get the legacy control system uh, and base back in stock. And that's a great one um, because, as you know, I, I think everyone understands the electronics world has been turned upside down and on its, on its head and backwards uh, over the last year. So uh, we are in just a constant struggle on some of the older technologies, uh, specifically like the, the CAD2 uh, and Base2 that have been around for uh, what doesn't seem like a long time in terms of YNL history, but in terms of electronics history, uh, it, it might as well be uh, prehistoric. Um, and uh, so we, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle. Uh, we're working with our, our manufacturers on getting some things into the supply chain for you here soon. And I think you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see some exciting new things coming down the, the pipe, on, pipe on that as well uh, here in the near future. Uh, Otis coming back, traction tires on the bump gun trolley. Okay, um, that's, where, that's where you were going with, with the question earlier, Otis. I'm sorry about that. Uh, when it reverses and spins for a few seconds before it starts moving in the opposite direction. Um, you should be able to replace traction tires. The, uh, I don't think it actually has traction tires on it. Uh, and the reason for that is, as I'm trying to do this mentally now, uh, thinking through things, uh, with a small engine like, like the trolley or an 040 switcher, for example, um, or, uh, you know, like a, a Camelback or, or a, a, a dock side switcher, engines that, that have a limited number of pickup wheels, we typically don't put traction tires on, uh, on the equipment. And the reason for that is we want to use as many contact services as possible for electrical pickup uh, so that you have good power flow to the engine. Uh, you also won't see traction tires on a lot of smaller scales. Uh, we do put them on uh, our S-Gage American Flyer, but a lot of HO manufacturers, certainly N-Scale manufacturers, don't use them uh, because you're better off having the extra electrical contact in those small scales than you are the, the traction from the tire. Um, so uh, that's why we don't put the traction tires on those. Um, I, I don't know that it would uh, make much of an improvement on that. Uh, the trolleys are designed to be so simple that uh, and traditional that they're, they're not really designed for slow speed crawling and realistically smooth starts and stops. Um, we've had some requests to do a more controlled uh, version of a trolley though. And it's something we're definitely thinking about down the road. Uh, Brian asked, I miss you changing the rubber on the wheels. Uh, yes, you did, uh, Brian. But if you rewind this after we're done, it'll be on YouTube and on Facebook and you can see it and see just how quick and easy it is. It took about uh, five minutes tonight. I wanted to do something uh, simple and easy, knowing that it was getting into that time of the year when uh, we have a lot of questions and a good discussion um, and uh, and just uh, take a little bit of an easier easier crack at things tonight. Uh, so rewind and, and watch it again and you'll go, oh, that, that's easy. Anyone can do it. I mean, if I can figure it out, anyone can do it. Um, uh, someone's asking how you can get a job at Lionel. Uh, we, we do uh, hire uh, from time to time. So uh, we, we post on, on Indeed and so forth uh, down here in North Carolina. Keep your eyes open if it's something that you're you're qualified for. Uh, you know, typically a, a, some of our most common openings are uh, material handling and things like that. But uh, certainly keep your eyes open. Um, and let's see what else we have here. Do, do, do. Uh, just ordered your first legacy train and legacy control system. Does the legacy command base come with the wire to attach to the fast track? Uh, if if I can recall correctly, there's a wire in there. If not, uh, pretty much any wire will do. It's a one wire connection uh, from the uh, C post on the the base to either your track or to the, the post on your transformer. Um, any length of wire doesn't have to be very long. Uh, it depends on how you're put setting up your trains, obviously, and where you're positioning the the base. Uh, so, real easy to easy to do. Um, knowing the way we package everything, I'm pretty sure there's a wire in there. Uh, it's been probably a few years since I've unboxed a new Legacy command set, to be honest with you. So, can't uh, can't remember uh, off the top of my head for sure. But uh, uh, just uh, just using using the uh, uh, any old any old wire will get you set up real fast on that. Okay. Um, updates on the two ten ten twos. Those are on their way. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they'll make it by the end of the year, um, but uh, they might slip into early January. It just depends on uh, how quickly those those trucks uh, can get things up here from the ports right now. Uh, we're working two shifts at the warehouse to try and get as much in and as much out as we can here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so they're getting close. Uh, they're getting real close. 
Okay. Uh, will there ever be a legacy 2.0? Uh, you know, I'm sure that things will continue to evolve. Um, and we, we have, uh, we're always looking for how we can continue to make improvements. So down the road, uh, there, there will always be a, an upgrade, but we are 100% committed to making sure that uh, we maintain a path uh, for those of you who have already have something. We're not going to obsolete everything you own, and we're, uh, you know, committed to, uh, you know, supporting things and making things easy and, and those transitions as, as smooth as possible. Okay. Um, Vision Line 036 scheme with Swinging Bell, maybe the Camelback with new tooling. Uh, we have done some smaller steam with swinging bells. Uh, it gets tricky uh, because uh, the smaller the steam engine, the less room there is inside it uh, to stuff the electronics. Uh, so I think we did a consolidation a few years ago. Um, it was the H10 uh, that we, um, we managed to squeeze that swinging bell in, and we'll definitely definitely continue to, to do some of those in the future. Uh, let's see. Uh, tip on smoke units, uh, you have a Northern Pacific Jeep 7 that won't smoke unless you spray condensed air down the exhaust. What it sounds like you're getting there, uh, Craig, is you get uh, a little bit, the, the smoke will form a bit of a meniscus uh, in that stack. Uh, and particularly with something like a Jeep 7 that has very small, um, small stack openings, it's going to be easier for it to, to build up in there. Uh, you might want to try um, just taking a Q-tip and cleaning gently out the inside of that that stack. You, if you're getting residue and things build up in there, logically, if you think it through, that's going to allow that oil and stuff to collect on it that much easier and, and dunk up that much faster. So a little cleaning may help uh, if you're having to do that all the time. Uh, but getting that meniscus is a pretty common occurrence. Um, if you're running the, the unit constantly, once you break that, it should continue to smoke. So if it's clogging up way too frequently on you, I would try just a little bit of a cleaning first to see if that that does any good. And I, I think a Q-tip is probably your best uh, best bet on there. Uh, Matt likes my sweatshirt. Thanks, Matt. Um, you know, I didn't think much about it tonight when we when we got on the air. I'm just glad it was something um, not completely inappropriate. And uh, go Lions. All right. Uh, let's see. You've got some, some more product ideas. Uh, reindeer loader for uh, the livestock loader. It's a, a neat one. Uh, yeah, we've got all sorts of um, sorts of things here. What gauge and what the name of the connector called that plugs into the fast track? Uh, give me one second here. Um, now we have two different uh, two different connections um, uh, on on that one, Matt. Uh, if you've got the current uh, a current train set that uses a dc power supply and has a barrel jack on it uh, we don't sell that connector separately it's it's part of the dc power supply that comes with it if you're looking for um a just a set of wire feed uh wire leads that will connect um, we do have those and it's it's a it's available through service this is the part number you want i have this still on here from last week's program uh, it's called the fast track terminal wire and you probably won't find this at a, at a hobby shop, but you can, you can order this through support at lionel.com. Uh, if you go to the lionel.com page and go to the support section uh, and look under replacement parts, type in that number there, 610-2016-200, and it should get you to the, uh, those hookup wires. And they are already pre-wired with the uh, connection, spade connections on one end to make it easy to plug into the bottom of the fast track which I still have also here in my messy workbench. So uh, these would connect into uh, these little terminals here right on the on the bottom side. As we talked about last week, or two weeks ago, I guess now the last episode, we talked about some other fast track tips. So go back on YouTube or Facebook a week uh, and look at the previous workbench Wednesday. We talked about doing solder connections and jumpers uh, and some other easy fast track tips as well there. So um, good question and a, and a good timely one. Uh, so if you haven't seen that episode, then definitely go back and, and take a look there, too. <laughs> Can we get a tour of your own personal layout and collection? Uh, I wish I could show you that, but unless you want to see a lot of stuff in boxes right now, uh, that's uh, that's about as good as it's going to look. Uh, so, so that's the... Uh, 
that that's the state of it. But at some point, uh, when when the house gets bigger and the kids are off to college, hopefully, uh, we'll we'll be doing a lot of workbench Wednesdays from uh, a bigger layout instead of my my workbench for sure. Uh, but thank you. I'm I'm glad to know people are 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 interested. Uh, Line Chief K4 is still supposed to release this year. Uh, I believe that's on the same container as the two 10 10 twos. Uh, so they should all uh, uh, all arrive around that, that same time, hopefully by the end of this year, but there's a, a decent chance that it'll slide into, into next year. Um, and then Brian asks, uh, you had your Polar Express for five years. Is there maintenance that you need to do? Uh, if it's running fine uh, and not making any crazy noises, probably not a whole lot you need to do. Uh, depends on how heavy you run it. Um, we, we've run trains at, at shows where they get a lifetime's work of, worth of wear and tear in just a couple of hours or a couple of days, um, you know, running constantly uh, or, or being played with it at a world's greatest hobby show, for example. Uh, they really get a good beta test there. Um, but if you're like most people who have the train for years and, and it only runs, you know, a few hours at a time, a few few days a, a, a week or a month or year or so forth, or uh, comes in and out of storage seasonally, uh, you can definitely stretch out that time frame. Uh, we've done some recent programs on this. We talked about lubrication uh, and what you need to look at there. Um, I'll touch on it since we, since we had such a real quick actual topic tonight. I'll get the, the fuller engine back out here. Um, we talked a little bit about it here with the with the, um, the posts and the side rods when we changed the traction tire. Uh, you want to put a little bit of light oil on all the moving parts. And uh, this light oil is something you can find very easily. Let me see if I still have my pack here at the workbench. I do. It's hiding behind the computer. Right. So I've got this is uh, this is an older set from Woodland Scenics. I'm not sure if they still make it or not, uh, but there are other companies, LaBelle and others, who still make these. And if you go to your hobby hobby supply store, you're guaranteed to find it. For side rods um, and other light parts like that, you want to use a thin uh, light oil. I always recommend going with a loyal an oil that is uh, plastic compatible. Even though you're probably not going to have that problem here on, on this locomotive, it's just a little bit more of an assurance that anything else that might come in contact with, um, maybe unintentionally, you're not going to have any problems with. And most of the oils sold for um, hobby use are. And then for, um, for heavier lubrication, uh, the gear, uh, there's not a lot of gearing on these, but you will have a worm gear where this motor uh, intersects the drivetrain. And uh, I'm not going to do it here tonight, but we can pop off this bottom panel, a couple of screws, and you'll see the gear right here inside this little uh, bulge. And that's where you want to put a little bit of that uh, heavier grease. And again, here we've got one that's uh, specifically labeled as such as, as gear lube. That's a little bit heavier uh, and will will uh, will give you more, more long-term running. As long as this stays sealed and clean, though, you can go a long time without having to having to re-oil and, and clean things. And the, the mistake that we see most often is overdoing it rather than letting it go too long. So, um, you know, just uh, use a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. The other thing is, you know, again, regular cleaning uh, goes a long way as well. Cleaning all of the surfaces, uh, the contact rollers, wiping these down so they don't get uh, too much buildup on them wiping down the uh, treads of the wheels, anywhere where you have that electrical contact pickup. If you start seeing things like flickering headlights and stuff like that, clean the wheels, clean your track. We talked about that a, a week or so ago, two weeks ago as well. Uh, and that'll help improve that electrical contact. Um, it's less of a problem with big, heavy die cast O gauge trains than it is with some of the smaller gauges. So you really want to take a look at things in the smaller scales. Um, let's see here. We've got... Uh, we're back for smoke unit wine during operation. Um, there's a this part, there's a couple of different smoke units that we use, and there was an earlier uh, question about uh, if you, whether to know if it uses pellets or, or oil. Um, if it's uh, one of the older traditional trains, like the 1950s, if it's from a, a previous generation, there's a really good chance it uses the pellets. Everything we've produced um, 
in recent history, uh, I would say for at least the last 15 or, or more years, probably maybe even a lot longer than that, uh, we'll use a liquid-based smoke. Uh, we recommend Lionel Premium Smoke Fluid. Uh, it's the only one that, after all the testing that we've done for it over the years, we found does not uh, gunk up and char the batting, uh, including the, the scents that, we, that we've added. We have a few scents, uh, flavors of smoke in the lineup now as well. Uh, and it does make a difference over the long term for the life of your, your smoke unit keeping things clean. It's not that you can't replace the batting, um, uh, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the one that we recommend the most based off of the oil. And we've, uh, we've rejected a, a lot of oils uh, because, of, uh, because of just that or because they didn't smoke well enough. Um, there, as far as the wine goes on our fan-driven smoke units, it's usually the impeller um, that gets just a little bit of a wine to it. And some of that same light oil uh, or that ultra-light oil uh, that I showed earlier, a small, small, small drop of that right there on that impeller will usually quiet that down. We'll probably cover smoke units in another one of these Workbench Wednesdays uh, because it's another one of those little uh, little things that uh, it's such a simple device and yet so much can go wrong with it uh, that just minor little tweaks and 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 uh, and whatnot can make a can make a big difference. So we'll definitely do a smoke unit tutorial at some point. Uh, after the holidays, we'll we'll get on to on to that. Um, so let's see here. Um, new catalog, January twentieth. I believe that's right around the date, seventeenth, twentieth, something like that. Uh, it's about that third week of January. We'll have the new catalog out. So get ready. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. And one more here from Otis. Uh, you have the original 2018 Polar Express and now the new 2.0 Polar Express. Uh, and you want to run them off the same remote. Is there a way to change the signal? There's no way to change the signal. Um, the, the boards that we put in our Lion Chief engines uh, can't be reprogrammed. They're factory programmed to, to pair up with the remote that comes with the set. Uh, however, with the, the 2.0 engine, uh, you, well, you can't reprogram it. What you can do, and you can use this with actually with all of them, uh, is you can use the universal remote, uh, and that will allow you to control the two locomotives separately uh, and independently on two different channels on that remote. Uh, those retail for around $50. Uh, most of our large dealers have them for around $40, so it's not a terribly expensive way to get uh, multi-unit control, and you can control up to three different uh, Lion Chief or Lion Chief Plus or Lion Chief Plus 2.0, uh, whether it's Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth 4, Bluetooth 5, or the older RF uh, locomotives as well, uh, with the exception of the very, very first Thomas we did, uh, because no one can seem to decipher what the, the code is in that to put it into the into the new system. Um, and it was only, I think, maybe the first uh, year or even less than a year's worth of production of that set. But other than that, uh, everything uh, that we've made uh, with Lion Chief in any of those variations uh, will work with that uh, universal uh, remote. So uh, that's your easiest way to to control multi multi trains. Um, so, uh, lots, lots, lots of easy ways around that. Uh, the app will also let you control one at a time and you can switch, switch back and forth. All right. So we're getting lots more questions about the catalog. I'm going to shut my mouth so I don't get fired before Christmas about all the great stuff that's coming in the catalog. Um, because, uh, you know me, I'd love to spill all the beans and let you know, cause I guess as excited as everybody else does about, uh, all the great new things. And, uh, what I can tell you is the entire team at Lionel, uh, from uh, our project management team that, uh, that comes up with a lot of the ideas and, and works with the factories and puts all the wheels in motion to the creative department who's been bringing these things to life um, in, in art form uh, for the last six months plus uh, to our sales team and everybody. We, we all get really excited about, uh, about the new catalogs and uh, it's like a second uh, a second uh, holiday season for us when, when all that comes out in January. So I'm going to do my best to bite my tongue uh, and not say any more about uh, what we have to look forward to. But trust me, uh, we've got a lot to look forward to coming up in January. And that's a, a pretty nice segue and a nice way to wrap things up tonight. We've been going for 45 minutes on a project that took three. So <laughs> I've really been running my mouth uh, mouth tonight. Uh, I hope that's uh, answered a lot of questions for you for you all and, and has been a help. Um, going through the rest of this year, we've, uh, if we follow the same two-week cycle, it would put us with another Workbench Wednesday 
uh, right between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, I may or may not jump on. I'll be honest. It depends on uh, what the family has planned that week. So uh, I'm going to put family first uh, that season, and I hope everyone else is, uh, has the, the time and the blessing uh, to be able to do the same. Uh, so I may see you all here in two weeks, uh, or if not, uh, I will see you in the start of the new year. Uh, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, a Happy New Year. Look forward to all the wonderful things to come in 2022. I hope that uh, this season and the year ahead bring you all many blessings, uh, not the least of which is model trains. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in tonight. Uh, we'll be seeing you all again soon. Uh, happy Railroads, everybody. And again, if you have any other questions or topics you'd like to see covered in here, Feel free to throw them in the comments uh, on any of the, the Facebook or YouTube posts. Uh, we do get in there and read them from time to time, even if I don't get a chance to, to answer everything. Uh, and I'm always uh, always happy to have some ideas for inspiration for a, another show to come. All right. So with that, happy modeling, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the season. <laughs>